At number 10, we have Harry's current girlfriend, Olivia Wilde's ex, Jason Sudeikis. Harry has been wishing for no hard feelings with Jason for as long as he's been trying to navigate the fairly new waters of his relationship with the actress. At this point, everybody should know that Harry does prefer to live a pretty low key life, which is why he's been keeping his relations with Olivia on the deal. Still, he has also hinted that he absolutely does not want to flaunt their romance to taunt Jason in any way. The awaited public confirmation of their relationship has resurfaced because Harry will be hitting the big screen to star in Olivia's upcoming directorial film, Don't Worry Darling. The couple first sparked dating rumors after their attendance at Harry's agent's wedding on January 3rd in California. Since then, the two were also captured arriving at Harry's LA home with their luggage in tow. When the relationship hit the media, Olivia had freshly split with Jason, with whom she was engaged with for seven years and birthed two children with during that time. Their reunion happened one day after Olivia and Harry's wedding date when the co-parents reportedly chatted outside Jason's home. That day marked the first day that the exes were photographed together since Harry and Olivia became an item. At number 9 we have late Love Island host Carolyn Flack, who formerly dated Harry back when he was only 17 and she was 32, making her 15 years older than the star. Around the time of their publicized breakup, Harry issued a Twitter message for his fans to confirm he was single, but went on to deny their split being one-sided. In it he wrote, Please know I didn't dump Caroline. This was a mutual decision. Oppositely, Caroline, who hosted the backstage coverage for national television awards back then, was evidently silent about their split. She instead tweeted about the great night she had before complaining about her next day hangover. Their relationship broke prior to Wendy heading to the US for their awaited tour. At number 8, we have another ex of Harry who just may not be a fan of him even to this day. Camille Rowe dated the singer from July 2017 to the following summer. When the French model and Harry parted, ways there were tons of speculation surrounding them about the reasons behind their breakup. Apparently a number of songs off Harry's Fine Line album from 2019 are inspired by Camille, with some even saying that Falling is a song Harry penned for her. Due to this, fans have theorized that Harry must have cheated on the model, resulting in their split. If this rumor were true, it would make sense why Camille is deemed as one of his famous ex-girlfriends who potentially hates him the most. However, this cannot be officially taken seriously because neither of the two stars ever directly spoke about their time together. Still, Harry did once reveal to Rolling Stone that his music is normally behind the points of his love life. Quote, It's not like I ever sat and done an interview and said, so I was in a relationship and this is what happened. Because for me, music is where I let that cross over. Number 7, Shia LaBeouf. Brad Pitt and Shia LaBeouf starred in the 2014 war film Fury. While the movie received glowing reviews from both critics and fans, reportedly the two actors didn't get along when filming the gritty action film. Shia LaBeouf has a reputation in Hollywood as being extremely extremely difficult to work with, and that was true with Fury as well. Reportedly, Shia was so committed to doing justice to the character of Boyd Swan that he had his front tooth removed and went for days without bathing or showering. Additionally, reports claim that Shia didn't believe that the makeup used for his facial scarring was realistic enough, so he actually cut his own face to make his war wounds look more realistic, and then during filming he would occasionally open the wounds to keep them looking more fresh and authentic. It's clear that he was determined to make it impression, but this allegedly rubbed Brad Pitt the wrong way. And according to Renka, Pitt was disappointed by Shia's energy on set of their film and believed that the two of them have very different styles of working and it just wasn't mixing well on a personal level, as he allegedly felt uncomfortable seeing how much torture Shia would put himself through just to get results. At number 6 we have supermodel Kendall Jenner and her 3 month fling with Harry. A Hollywood Life exclusive covered their breakup story online and apparently Harry was never in it for the long haul. Despite media photos confirming what looked to be great chemistry between the two over a November dinner date in 2013 and PDA filled dates and worldwide trips being reported shortly after. The source disclosed that Harry was aware from the start that their love affairs would be brief. Considering the busy positions they were both in at the time, with Harry set to do a stadium tour with his former band that began in April and ran until early October, and Kendall with her budding modeling career, their short-lived encounter made sense. With that, apparently one of them reportedly walked away with a bit more of an empty heart though, and it definitely was not Harry. However, the musician seemed to have enjoyed the fleeting time he did share with Kendall and their spoon-worthy global trotting dates. The HL Insider further detailed that their future with one another was up in the air at one point in time. Due to their working commitments being the end of their romance, it can also attest to why they're cordial to this day. When Kendall hosted James Corden's show in place of the OG host a while back, she and guest star Harry played the infamous game series Spill or Fill Your Guts. During this, Kendall inquired which of Harry's songs were about her, and he chose to deny the questions and fill his mouth with cod liquids. However, fans have it all thought out that they know which songs are about the model. Either way, despite their history, they remain friends and that is applaudable for sure. However, who knows if
if they'll actually ever work together. Number five, Mark Canton. Harrison Ford wasn't the only person that Brad Pitt bumped heads with during the filming of 1997's The Devil's Own. In fact, not long after the filming wrapped, news also surfaced that Pitt had wanted out of the film that he felt was doomed. But it was Mark Canton, the head of Columbia Pictures, that threatened him with a $63 million lawsuit if he went through with the walkout. So of course Pitt was kind of trapped, but he let his frustration out in that controversial interview in Newsweek magazine ahead of the film's release. Apart from calling the movie the most irresponsible bit of filmmaking, he said, quote, I don't know why anyone would want to continue making that movie. We had nothing. The movie was the complete victim of this drowning studio head who said, I don't care, we're making it. I don't care what you have, shoot something. If that wasn't enough, Pitt even said that they had no script and it was a lot of pressure on himself and Harrison Ford just to make it all up as they went along. So clearly he resents Canton for putting him in that kind of situation in the first place. At number four, we have another former One Direction member who takes the first of two spots on today's countdown. Notably, ever since Zayn and Harry's group was announced for an indefinite hiatus, they've been busy dropping a range of solo projects and other works on their own. Zayn, one of the five previous members who left the band back in 2015, has been pretty candid about his reasons for departing with his groupmates. He and Harry share the same sentiment in a way of wanting to produce music that felt more like themselves. However, this is where their similarities end, because despite the men being vocal about supporting each other's careers, a single US Weekly interview with Zayn basically threw all talks of the group's reunion as a fivesome out the window. In it, Zayn explained how aside from their band still being on cordial speaking terms, they're obviously not nearly as intimate, and he mentioned Harry directly. According to the former band member, he never actually spoke with Harry in that way, so he knew there was no hope for a long-lasting relationship outside of their group. However, not looking at Zayn's confessions, dismissing any bad blood feuds, most fans weren't really as shocked as they should have been realistically when looking at the bigger picture. Still silent back and forth jabs between Harry and Zayn's years-long ex-girlfriend Gigi Hadid that of course could be chalked up as coincidences probably helped play a part in fans' theories. Number 3. Michael Madsen In 1991, Pitt and Michael Madsen both appeared in the 90s feminist classic Thelma and Louise, and right away the two seemed to butt heads in a major way, and Madsen made no secret of how much he dislikes Pitt, but the beef between the actors goes way deeper than just trouble on the set of the film. In fact, they have both worked with along. So clearly he resents Canton for putting him in that kind of situation in the first place. At number 2, we have former X Factor judge and group producer Simon Cowell. Now Simon was on the show when Harry Styles was being formed as the next up and coming hottest boy band. In fact, he even bunched them together originally on the show following their X Factor UK third place final ranking. But Harry says the gifts he received from Simon weren't so merry and bright. Rather, he quipped to Chris Evans during a Radio 2 interview that Simon apparently gave him an anxiety problem. At the time, Harry was promoting the release of his long awaited solo album alongside his buddy Nick Grimshaw. Nick had grilled the watermelon sugar artist on the debate of whether or not Two Ghosts was about Taylor Swift and missed fan suspicions. And in response, Harry gave us a non committal answer of, I think it's pretty self explanatory. Some things change and you can do all the same things, and sometimes it's just different. At number one, we have 26 year old Midsommar actress Florence Pugh. Florence will be hitting the big screens once more to star opposite the world's favorite pop heartthrob in his girlfriend's upcoming psychological thriller. Olivia Wilde is directing Don't Worry Darling and has cast Florence as the female lead and Harry as her partner. However, the artistry of the movie has seemingly been tainted by the attention grabbing, racy, intimate oral scene between the two stars in the trailer for the film. When Florence discussed why this bothered her, it was with Harper's Bazaar, where she expressed her opinions on the ideas she has since received major backlash over. Fans anxiously bit their nails in anticipation for Florence and Harry's obviously steamy bed scene, but the slightly younger Brit decided to address the commotion over the sexual scene she shares with Harry as per the trailer's May drop. After she got that part off her chest, Florence ventured into a more positive topic of discussion, like her love for her character. Quote, I love playing a distressed woman. I guess all my movies have that element of women being forced into a corner, forced into an opinion, forced into a way of life. And then finally, something cracks. In regards to the film itself, she told Vogue that it is really sexy in a grown up way and she hopes her audience will realize how rarely they see female hunger and specifically this type of female pleasure. Other appearances from stars like Gemma Chan, Kiki Lane, Nikki Kroll, and Chris Pine are set to hit theaters on September 23rd of this year. Number 10, Tom Cruise. Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise may seem like they have a lot in common at first glance, but they couldn't be more at odds with each other. Yet, allegedly, they have been feuding for 25 years, and it all started in 1994's interview with a 
Vampire. The hit horror movie where both actors had starring roles really ignited their resentment for one another. And even though the film was nominated for an Oscar and a Golden Globe upon its release, Brad said that he was miserable during the entire filming and that Tom being there certainly didn't help. And when asked about his co-star in an interview, Brad did not bother to hold back his feelings at all. Quote, he bugged me. There came a point during filming when I started really resenting him. He's North Pole, I'm South. He's always coming at you with a handshake, whereas I may bump into you. There was this underlying competition that got in the way of any real conversation. Fast forward to 2009, when both actors were starring in World War II dramas, Brad in the very successful Inglorious Bastards and Tom Cruise in Valkyrie, which was a critical flop. So much so that Brad even called Valkyrie a ridiculous movie, which goes to show you that the rivalry was still there. Number nine, Marion Cotillard. In 2016, Brad Pitt and Marion Cotillard were co-stars in a film called Allied, which is a second World War romantic drama where Brad played Max, a handsome intelligence agent who has an affair with a French resistance fighter called Marianne. As good as the film might have been, it was certainly overshadowed by the rumors that plagued the set, in particular the closeness between Brad and his leading lady. In fact, a source close to Brad and Angelina at the time claimed that the actress was so jealous of Marion that she refused to meet with the French star after meeting her on the set of the film, telling the Daily Mail, quote, Angelina completely ignored Marion on the set, and when Marion tried to talk to her, she just looked away. Marion was devastated. Here she is thinking she's going to meet this great UN ambassador, and instead Angelina refuses to speak to the woman because of her own jealousy. In fact, Angelina reportedly hired a private investigator to watch the two actors on set and scout out a possible affair. And although none of this was Marion's fault, it's unlikely that Brad, who's now dating again, would work with the French actress again, considering how much scandal it brought to his own marriage with Angelina. Number eight, Harrison Ford. Ford and Pitt both starred in 1997's The Devil's Own, which had reportedly faced endless problems during production. One of the biggest being that allegedly the two leads didn't get along. Conflict off the screen erupted when Pitt told Newsweek magazine that the film was, quote, the most irresponsible bit of filmmaking, if you can call it that, that I've ever seen. I couldn't believe it. Reports surfaced that the two co-stars disagreed on which character should be at the center of the film, but the alleged feud between Ford and Pitt may have just been an argument over the script, as Larry Gordon, the producer of Devil's Own, came out saying, I never saw two men not getting along. The discussions were over the script, and every movie is a work in progress. And even Indiana Jones star himself didn't seem too upset by the comments, and even suggested that Brad simply went on a rant about the film and didn't realize that he was going to be quoted throwing it under the bus. But Ford made it clear that the only thing he didn't appreciate was the fact that people were asking more questions about the working relationship between the two actors rather than the film itself. At number seven, we have London-based blogger and chef Tess Ward. Tess gained a reputation in the food industry, but her fame skyrocketed once she was publicly linked to Harry. Tessa graduated from the University of Leeds before she enrolled at Lee Cordon Bleu and received her professional chef degree. Following this, Tess published a cookbook titled The Naked Diet, where she discussed the celebration of unprocessed naked ingredients. According to a world exclusive dish from Bazaar, Harry and Tess were introduced through mutual friends. Tess would later be photographed with Harry cruising around North London in his Audi at the time. However, as for the same source, Tess broke it off with the musician because she apparently still had feelings for her ex. Number six, Jennifer Aniston. The story that dominated the tabloids in the 2000s was just as scandalous as it was made out to be. Jen and Brad got married in 2000 in a lavish Malibu wedding, and things were perfect for the Hollywood it couple until they suddenly announced their divorce in 2005. What happened exactly? Well, long story short is that Brad met Angelina for the first time on the set of Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and Brad famously embarked on a jet-setting romance with her, despite the fact that he was still married to Jennifer. Although all parties denied that there was infidelity involved, Angelina couldn't help but gush to the papers about her new romance. And Jennifer told Vogue in 2008 that she had in fact read some of those interviews. And according to her, quote, there was stuff printed in there that was definitely from a time when I was unaware that it was happening. And I felt those details were a little inappropriate to discuss. That stuff about how she couldn't wait to get to work every day, not cool. Although they might be on good terms now, there's certainly a reason that Brad avoided having Jennifer in any of his films. And it probably has a lot to do with their past. At number five, we have Taylor Swift. Now, as messy as all her previous breakups are, this one is surely no different. In a formal April Vanity Fair issue, Taylor opened up about the details of her then recent
recent breakup with the former 1D boy Bander. Only 23 years old at the time, Taylor explained how she was not the typically clingy, insane, desperate girlfriend that a lot of her exes painted her out to be. She even heavily implied that Harry pursued her and later claimed Harry wore her down into agreeing to finally date. It wasn't long before Taylor said she witnessed a photograph of Harry locking lips with a friend, resulting in Taylor supposedly breaking it off until Harry convinced her to get back together. According to Harry's rep at the time though, Taylor's claims about Harry's supposed wandering eyes are quote undeniably false. And despite their separation being a rocky one, Harry only gave positive remarks about Taylor's Brit Awards performance in February, deeming it a great act. Unfortunately, in an event that didn't look too good on Taylor, she was later pictured filming her 22 track music video where she was said to be imitating Harry by dressing up like him. While fans remained devastated of the pairing separation, the actual reason behind it was again never disclosed. Reportedly though, a handful of Taylor's 1989 songs from 2014 are about the musician, and she more recently admitted to Elle during an interview that she experiences bouts of anxiety as per song lyrics. Number 4 Odile Soudant The famous French designer who was once a friend or acquaintance of Brad Pitt's ended up suing the couple in 2017 over the lighting in their Chateau Miraval home. The Guardian reported that Soudant claimed that the former couple simply stopped paying for her work that she did on four buildings of their 40 room mansion in France, while the designer insisted that she had no written contract specifically with Pitt or Jolie, she claims that he gave her the green light to do whatever she wanted in order to make their home beautiful. She took him literally at his word and hired architects, designers, lighting and acoustic specialists, and even an optical engineer to calculate the angle of the sun's rays on the chateau. The trouble started growing when Sudan noticed that Pitt and Jolie stopped paying for her estimated $29 million project after her billings reached a approximately $6 million, and Pitt emailed her saying, I don't know how things happen in France, but in the United States, friends don't attack friends. I've been nothing but a fan of your work. Do not attack. Let's finish the project and be proud of it. But by August of 2017, the former couple were ordered to pay her roughly $674,000, including about $71,000 for damaging her reputation. At number three, we have the second half of former band members Harry would rather not be involved with, and that's Mr. Mr. Strip That Down, Liam Payne. When the latter shared information that there was a potential reunion in store for all of their once core dominating English band, Liam made sure to vocalize that Harry didn't seem to want to be a part of it. When he discussed everyone's initial interest, it was delivered candidly on a Tuesday for Cyrus XM's hit One Morning mashup. He made predictions as to why it would be difficult for a reunion between them and Harry, specifically because Liam described not speaking to Harry in a long time, so he wouldn't know where his mind is at for a reunion. Quote, I haven't spoken with Harry in a while so I don't know where his head's at with that. I heard he mentioned it in some sort of magazine thing or whatever the other day, which was cool, but I think everybody else has been really outspoken and I think that they're ready to go whenever. Harry himself had also briefly touched on the topic of the highly anticipated One Direction revisit during his September Rolling Stone feature where he shared his sole focus on his career but not being opposed to return to the band should the timing work itself out accordingly. Number 2 Mark Forster The fact that World War Z managed to do okay at the box office is literally a miracle when you consider how massive the feud was between its star Brad Pitt and its director Mark Forster, making it one of the most infamously troubled shoots of any blockbuster from the last decade. Pitt starred as a UN worker Jerry Lane who searches the globe for information that can stop the zombie outbreak that is bringing down nations, but on the set was total chaos. Vulture reported that Pitt eventually stopped speaking altogether to Forster and that the director's notes for him were being given through a rotation of three different production members. That's right, they hated each other so much that they couldn't even speak to each other face to face. But the situation was further complicated by Pitt's status as a producer, giving him authority to challenge Forster's creative calls and causing the post-production process to be dragged out by their conflicting visions. And when the studio chiefs ordered reshoots of the film, the apparent breakdown in the duo's relationship just made that progress extremely problematic. And coming in at number one, Angelina Jolie. They were once Hollywood's glittering power couple, but for the last Last five and a half years, Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt have been very publicly airing out their dirty laundry in one of the messiest and most expensive divorce battles of all time. It was a shock to the world when the Tomb Raider actress Angelina Jolie filed for divorce from Pitt in September of 2016, just two years after they wed and 12 years into their partnership. Citing irreconcilable differences, Angelina requested sole physical custody of their six children and the following month she made a threat to take the children abroad despite a renegotiation custody agreement. The actress even took a swipe at him in Harper's Bazaar, saying, I would love to
to live abroad and will do so as soon as my children are 18. But right now, I'm having to base where their father chooses to live. In fact, it was recently reported that Brad is suing Angelina for allegedly secretly selling the couple's $116 million winery just to spite him. Although the once golden couple worked together on the iconic spy movie, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, it's unlikely these two will ever share the big screen ever again. Oh, 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 oh,